In the beginning, everybody's going to conquer the world. After a few weeks, a few months, maybe even a few years, they start to get tired. They start to get frustrated. They start to ask, why is this so hard? They start to ask, why is this so hard for me? And that's when people quit. When you start feeling that massive frustration, that massive anger, that massive stress, you are about to have a breakthrough. You are about to move through an area that most people can't make it through. You need to have grit. You need to have the stick to to persevere past the point that your competition will. It's the ones who understand that things are going to improve and keep focused on the end result that make it through it. See, I always wanted to be a speaker and a trainer. I wanted to make an indelible impact in the training industry, but I didn't want to be a businessman. I'm a first generation entrepreneur in my family. Because I was told I was dumb and stupid most of my life, I unconsciously developed a tremendous phobia about paper. If you say, let's write me a speech, I automatically become nervous. I can't write you a speech, but I can give you a speech, but I can't write you one. I can't tell you the principles of speaking and what it takes, but I can demonstrate it for you. I can show you how to speak, but I can't give you a written explanation for it. I'm not smart like my sister who graduated from the University of Miami, but I have people on my staff with her education that work for me, but I can't write stuff that they write because that's not my area of strength. But so I had a fear. I felt I could not operate a business. And so I wanted to hire a consultant to take care of the details. I had given this consultant power of attorney to sign checks and handle my business. I called my consultant and said, listen, I thought about this. It's time for me to grow. I've got to be willing to handle my own business. I want to meet with you. I need to develop a working knowledge of this. I've got to stop running from this. I've got to learn. Admit my ignorance and decide it doesn't have to be like this for me. To make a long story short, my consultant canceled 14 meetings with me. And when I finally got my books back and have not seen my consultant to this day, I knew why. That thousands of funds have been embezzled from my account. Now, whatever happened in our lives, we allow it, we permit it, and we promote it. So it was just an education as my career is going up, not coming down but it's going up. It was just a tuition I had to pay in the universe because I wasn't willing to learn. I wasn't willing to do that. Now here's something else that's fascinating. I said, okay, see, if you're not willing to grow in life, life will kick your butt until you surrender. So I said, okay, okay, I'm willing to learn. And here's what I discovered. It's not as hard as I thought it would be. It has blown my mind. It's unbelievable. I said, if I had known, here I am, I'll be 45 February the 17th. I've been running from things that I consider difficult. And if I had known it was it's this simple, I'd have been doing it long before. I wake up every single day. I am who I say I am. And I get what I get because I live in beat smoke. Y'all gotta do me a favor. Stop being gazelles. You're not average. You were born to be great. You were born to be great. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. You're not average. You're not good. You're great. God created you to be great. So be phenomenal. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? You got two more to go. And when you get to success, it's not about skill. When you get to a certain level of success, it's about stamina. So you got to be willing to grow. Osborne said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. So you've got to decide to grow. See, most people won't, won't try and grow. Now, why, why wasn't I willing to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Because I did want to fail. I didn't want to look stupid. I didn't want to admit the fact that I didn't know something. 85% of people in life allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. Repeat after me, please. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. Absolutely. 
See, if you know how to do something right, well, it only makes sense to do it right. But see, I wasn't willing to be a businessman badly. See, if you want to make it in life, here's how you can begin to make your goal, ladies and gentlemen. Decide to make your life a great experiment. See, most people want to experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Most people want to be perfect when they come out the gate. Most people want to do things right all the time. You're not going to do everything right. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to have a lot of failures. You're going to have a lot of struggles. You're going to feel dumb and ask questions and don't know what to do or where to go. And that's part of growing. That's part of the experimentation process. See, life is about living. Life is about growing. Life is about challenging self. Life is about stretching. What if you don't make it? So what? I'm enjoying the trip. Hello. That's what life is about. Say, I want some juice in my life. Say that, please. See, a lot of people going through life and they just say, how you doing, honey? I'm just trying to make it. Give me a break. No, I want some juice in my life. Uh-uh. I mean, it's no in-between for me. I don't want any in-between. They say, even if I go out, I saw this movie called Glory. Say, he went down standing up. You better believe it. So don't, you know, a lot of people have died already. Somebody said that many people die at age 21 and don't get buried until they're 65. They play it safe. They don't take any chances. Well, as soon as I graduate or as soon as the bills are paid, as soon as the children grow up, you know, as soon as I get my divorce, all this kind of stuff up in here. No, no. If there's something you want to do, don't live like you have a thousand years to live. Decide that you're going to experiment with your life. Decide that you're going to take some chances. See, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not willing to risk, you're not willing to grow. And if you're not willing to grow, you're not willing to be your best. And if you're not willing to be your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? So think about that. Decide to make your life an experiment. Decide to take some chances and come out into the universe and find out what you're made of. Here's something else. Here's what can change your life. Think about your situation. This is what happened for me. It was a moment of truth for me. Once, if you embrace this, I guarantee you, I don't care if you're in sales, I don't care what kind of business that you're in, you can be in the mortgage business, automobile business, any kind of business. If you embrace this, this dream that you're thinking about, this goal that you have in your mind, this vision that you have of yourself, if you embrace this, ladies and gentlemen, it will change your life. This is what happened for me. You've got to get to the point where you can say to yourself, this is the key to changing your life when you say that. I repeat, please, I have had it. Here's the third step to becoming consistently self-disciplined. Number one is realizing that discipline isn't the easiest option. Number two, discipline is a full-time activity, day by day, every day, and the third step to becoming self-disciplined is really a philosophy that holds one of life's unique promises. Number three simply says, for every disciplined effort, there is a multiple reward. That's one of life's great arrangements. It's like the law of sowing and reaping. In fact, it's an extension of the biblical law that says if you sow well, you reap well. Now here's a unique part of the law of sowing and reaping. Not only does it suggest that we'll all reap what we've sown, it also suggests that we'll reap much more. Life is full of laws that both govern and explain behaviors. But this may well be the major law we need to understand. For every disciplined effort, a multiple reward. For every disciplined effort, a multiple reward. What a concept. If you render unique service, your reward will be multiplied. If you're fair and honest and patient with others, your reward will be multiplied. If you give more than you expect to receive, your reward is more than you expect. But remember, the key word here, as you might well imagine, is discipline. Everything of value requires care and attention. Everything of value requires discipline. Children require discipline. They must have a structure built for them. 
They must have boundaries to work within so they feel secure and comfortable to explore and grow. They must learn to recognize what's right and what's wrong, what's acceptable behavior, what's not acceptable. Children require unwavering discipline, consistent discipline, or they'll be confused as to how they're supposed to behave. Likewise, our thoughts require discipline. We must set up our inner boundaries, our codes of conduct, or our thoughts will be confused. And with confused thoughts, we'll end up being confused hopelessly lost in the maze of life, and confused thoughts produce confused results. Look around you at this very moment in time. What might you be doing that needs attention? Perhaps you're on the brink of giving up or starting over or starting out, and the only missing ingredient to your incredible success story in the future is a new and self-imposed discipline that will make you stay longer and try harder and work more intensely than you ever thought you possibly could. The most valuable form of discipline is the one that you impose on yourself. Don't wait for things to deteriorate so drastically that someone else must impose discipline into your life. Wouldn't that be tragic? How could you possibly explain the fact that someone else thought more of you than you thought of yourself? that they forced you to get up early and get out into the marketplace when you would have been content to let success go to someone else who cared more about themselves. Your life, my life, the life of each one of us is going to serve as either a warning or an example. A warning of the consequences of neglect, self-pity, lack of direction and ambition, or an example of talent put to use. Some of y'all, you lying to yourself. You say you want to be great. You say you want to get to the next level. You say you want to be a national champion. You say you want a promotion. You say you want to start your own business. You talk too much. Shut up. There's nothing wrong with the opportunity. You're not giving 120. You're giving 70. You're giving 60. You're giving 50. And you want what these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears, you want what they pay for and it ain't free. You said you want to be great. You want to do great things. You want to have great. You want to be great. This is but on the other hand, you comfortable with average. Stop wasting valuable time. Knowing that if we begin to live our lives as if each day were our last, our lives will take off, take on a whole new meaning. And whatever it is, sports, life, business, whatever it is, health. Listen to me very closely. You got to change that mindset. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Self-preparation. Be ready for tomorrow by doing all that you can today, setting your goals. Set a goal that will make you stretch for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all-encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future, to see what it will make of you to achieve it. So there you have the two components of positive self-direction. Number one, self-knowledge, knowing who you are and what you want to do with your life. And number two, self-preparation, getting ready for the opportunities before they come your way. You need both aspects for positive self-direction, figuring out who you are and what you want, and being prepared for the day you reach your goals, being ready, being worthy, becoming the person you need to be in pursuit of what you want. What good is an opportunity if you're not prepared to take advantage of it? It's no good. Won't do a thing for you. Be prepared. Self-preparation. The benefits are, number one, it moves you toward your goals. And number two, it refuels your ambition. Be prepared. Get ready.
This method of self-preparation involves three steps. Step one, carefully consider where the next opportunity for reaching your goal will originate. Where will it come from? Will it come from networking with your colleagues? Will it come from reading the last book that you bought? The book that's still sitting on your shelf waiting to give you some answers? Will it come from you taking the time to think it out? Where will it come from? The next opportunity that will push you forward. If you don't know, here's what you have to do. For each major goal of yours, the top priorities on your list, for each of these, take out a separate piece of paper, one single sheet per major goal, write down your goal at the top and start listing all reasonable resources. Write down every possible place that you could find the opportunity to achieve this goal. And with each resource, classify them. Ask yourself, is this resource a sure thing? A good bet? About even chances? Unlikely? A long shot? Ask yourself these questions and classify all of the resources you have written down. That's the first step. The second step in this method of self-preparation is to make sure you know what you need to do to be prepared for your opportunities. Go through your entire list of goals and resources and classify them. Break each resource into concrete steps of preparation. Start by working on the sure bets first and then move down the line. The long shots will come through every so often, but start with the resources that will serve you best now. Get ready for the opportunities before they come your way. Step three in the self-preparation method is to do all you can to make each opportunity more likely to happen. After you've determined what you have to do to get ready to be prepared, after you've determined this, see what you can do to expedite the process. What can you do to increase the likelihood of this opportunity? Go over it and over it and over it. Use these three methods again and again as you assess where you are now and where you have to go next to keep moving toward the achievements that are most important to you. Step one, consider your resources. Step two, determine what you have to do to get ready. Step three, expedite the opportunities. And by the way, this method of self-preparation works wherever you are in your journey, whether you're close to your goals or whether you're just starting your journey of self-direction. This method works. Have working knowledge to draw from. Continually work on yourself in preparation of where you want to be. Build a reservoir of thoughts and ideas and philosophies and experiences that are your own. Build, grow, change, get ready, be prepared. Be prepared for a life worth living. Now here are the four ifs that make life worthwhile. Number one, life is worthwhile if you learn nothing worse than being stupid. Life is worthwhile if you learn. Learn from your personal experiences. Learn from other people's experiences. Second, life is worthwhile if you try. Now you've got to take what you've learned and see if you can try your hand at it. Someone says, well, you can't try, you have to do. No, you have to try. I put the bar up two feet and ask the kids who can jump two feet. I can, some say, I can't, some say, I don't know, some say. How are you going to know? You don't, you've just got to try. Just back off and run at it. How are you going to know if you don't try? Now, what if you knock the bar down? Does that mean you can't jump two feet? No, you have to what? Try it again. Of course, you have to try. Try it another way, but try. Try your hand at it. When the record book on you is finished, let it show your wins and your losses, but don't let the record book show that you didn't try. Let's talk about today's greatest adventure, and you'll see in a moment why the word today in the title is meant literally. You've heard the definition of success as the progressive realization of a worthy goal. 
The purpose of this message is to tell you of a wonderful way to keep realizing, to keep achieving your goals one after another in the years ahead. A goal sometimes seems so far off, and our progress often appears to be so painfully slow, that we have a tendency to lose heart. It sometimes seems we'll never make the grade, and we come close to falling back into old habits, which, while they may be comfortable now, lead to nowhere. But there's a way to beat this. It's been used successfully by many of the world's most successful people, and it's been advocated by many of the greatest thinkers. It's to live successfully, one day at a time. A lifetime is comprised of days strung together into weeks, months, and years. Well, let's reduce it to its lowest common denominator, a single day, and then still further, to each task of that day. Look at it this way. A successful life is nothing more than a lot of successful days put together. It's going to take so many days to reach your goal. If this goal is to be reached in a minimum of time, every day must count. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Many people give up on the one yard line. See, life is not just that simple. It's not that cut and dry. And that's why most people never realize their personal greatness because they're casual about life. And when you are casual about life, you will end up a casualty. You can't get out of something, something that you're not willing to put into it. You have to put your everything, your mind, your energy, your effort, your discipline. Nothing is going to jump out the fire. If you don't throw something in there, it's not going to happen. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. You do it because you're supposed to. Don't live frustrated thinking that there's something wrong with you. Trying to prove to them who you are. Trying to convince them to affirm you. Let it go. There's nothing wrong with you. If you had to have it, they would give it. Since you don't, shake it off. Keep your head held high. Your value doesn't come from people. It comes from your creator. Either you take on the shape of your environment or you resist it and transform by the renewing of your mind. Everything you've ever changed about your life started in your head. It started in your head, it started in your mind, it started with a decision, it all starts in your mind. What we think is the best, many times, is far less than what God has in mind. You haven't seen your best days, you may feel stuck, doors have closed, that all happened for a reason. The best part of your life is not behind you. The best part of your life is the next part of your life. You wouldn't be discouraged over that door that closed if you knew what God was about to open. You haven't seen or imagined what God has in store. So feeling safe and feeling secure is very important to me and I think it's very important to every single person. I think that God created us to feel safe, secure, confident, and bold. Your soul maybe has it blocked, but God did not create you for fear and worry and insecurity and a lack of confidence and extreme shyness and extreme timidity. You will become whatever you cultivate, whatever you feed, that's what's going to grow in your life. I'm saved, but I got to change my diet. I'm saved, but I got to change who influences me, who speaks into my life, who feeds my mind, who determines what looks good on me, who determines what I can do and who I am. What's wrong with you is all those people who knew you win, because if they knew you win, they'll hold you to back then. I got to go. Too many people looking for identity and value and they're looking for it in all the wrong places. They look for it in what they do, who they know, what they own, what they look like. And I think that we need to do our best to look as good as we can. All I can say is take what God's given you and do the best you can with it. But don't be comparing yourself with somebody else. I become confident when I get the right view of other people and I get the right view of myself. 
It's amazing, right? Ever notice that arrogance requires advertising, but confidence speaks for itself. In fact, insecurity, cynicism, and arrogance, they're all loud. But confidence doesn't even have to speak because confidence isn't based on your words. Confidence is an action. It's an ability to step into the moment and say, I'm not backing down. I'm not quitting. I got my confidence back and I can fulfill. Your tongue is the rudder for your life. It's determining the direction. Next time you're tempted to say something negative about yourself, your future, your finances, zip it up. Don't steer yourself toward defeat. Say not you're too young. Say not you can't accomplish your dreams. God wouldn't have given them to you if you weren't well able. Try your best to trust God. Trust God's timing. And when he is sending you bold signs and wonders, use those as confirmation. When God is trying to steer you in a particular direction, it's like little pieces of popcorn down a hallway. And at some point, you're going to get to that whole bucket. Love yourself. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. Greatness takes tremendous focus. It takes decisions that you make and you can't always have everybody approving of what you know you're supposed to do. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll do great in life. You cannot have the approval of everyone and be great. You're always going to live your life at the lowest common denominator of your friends if you don't watch it. When you receive the message, when you receive the confirmations that these people that are around you are sucking you dry. So how could you have any love left inside of your heart to take care of your kids or your family when you got these people around you that are sucking you dry? Ah, I got nothing left. I'm going down. I'm melting. I'm melting. Why are you living a life to impress them? Why are you placing value on what they think? Doing all these things to impress them. Why? I'll tell you something right now, man. You need to place value on the people who love you at your worst. Because those are the people who deserve to be there when you're at your best. If you don't heal from emotional wounds, you will bleed on people that had nothing to do with it. How many people are living wounded over how they were raised? A friend that walked away? Instead of letting it go, they replay it in their mind. They wonder why they don't have good relationships. It's because they haven't healed. They're living out of a wounded place. Isn't it amazing how one bad relationship can ruin all of your other relationships? For really being honest tonight, most of the pain in our life, it comes from relationship pain. Some of the hardest things for us to get over, they're attached to people. Despise not the day of small beginnings. And so many people say, when I get a big break, when a big door opens, when somebody notices me, but that is not the key to success. The key to success is to start where you are, right where you are, not when things get better, but start where you are. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed disciplines is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. Changing loyalties and shifting frequently from one commitment to another. Leaving behind a trail of broken friendships and unfulfilled promises. All because of a discipline that was either non-existent or imposed so infrequently that it was ineffective. Most of us 
We're worried about suffering. We're afraid of it. it. When we're suffering and sacrificing, we wonder whether it's worth it. We wonder whether sacrifice or setbacks or suffering is a sign it's not our real dream. See, at the gym, you'd never think, oh, I'm going through some pain and discomfort. This must be a sign I shouldn't be at the gym. You'd never think that. You have to break it down, suffer and sacrifice for it to grow. When you need motivation yourself, don't look for someone to scream and yell. Don't look for someone else to give you motivation. Look at yourself and remind yourself why you are doing what you are doing. This temporary pain, this fight, this is what will make you stronger. That's the key word. Discipline. Self-discipline. Consistent self-discipline. It doesn't really matter how smart you are or how much you know if you don't use it. Better than knowledge is applied knowledge. And once we've applied our knowledge, we must study the results of that process. Get the clutter out. Start letting some of this junk go to make some room for something else. Do that with people. There's some people who's cluttering up your life. They're just holding and occupying the space that somebody useful, positive, could be holding that space. You don't even have time to look to see what else is out there because you all have all of these people surrounding you that's not in enabling you to grow. Some of you tonight, you've experienced someone failing you. Maybe your mom was never there. Maybe it was a boyfriend who promised you the world but took off. Before you know it, what happens is these failures are holding us back from getting into our future. And these bad relationships are blinding us from all of the good potential relationships. Success is all about building relationships. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Some people might not step up when you ask them for help, but guess what? The worst thing can happen to you if somebody refuses you you didn't have it anyway. Ask people, you never know. Suppose they say yes. That could be the turning factor. You will travel in the direction of your thinking. If you think down, you will go down. If you think up, you will come up. The way you think about your situation determines your reality. The way you think about your family determines your reality. The way you think about yourself you're not being hurt by the way people think about you. Many of those people are a reflection of how you think about you. If you think about yourself a certain way, you will attract people who think about you a certain way. And you will expel from your life people who do not line up with how you think about yourself. The mind then becomes the battleground. The mind, Satan is always trying to do battle to take over your mind with warfare. Some of you is fighting your thoughts right now. Living in mourning is going to keep the new doors from opening. You have to heal so you can see the new relationships, the new opportunities. And the quicker you let things go, the easier it is. Your time is valuable. That's a distraction trying to get you off course. This is a verse you must remember all your life. It says, man's days are determined. That means you don't decide how long you live. Your life is on a timer. Extreme environments will turn you into a different creature. Extreme environments will make you move differently. It can happen in the midst of a dark depression, even in the middle of a gut-wrenching heartbreak, in the midst of unimaginable loss, it can happen. My question to you is, what's about to change inside of you that's gonna make people think you can defy gravity? It takes discipline to plan. It takes discipline to execute our plan. And it takes discipline to change either our plan or our method of executing that plan if the results are poor. It takes discipline to ponder the value of someone else's opinion when our pride and our arrogance leads us to believe that we are the only ones with the answers. What are your expectations? What do you expect to get from life? What do you expect to get from your relationships? What is your ideal day? 
What is it that you expect from this journey that you're involved in? People that have a strong sense of self-approval, they have high expectations for themselves and from others. I must be great. I'm pretty. I must be great. I have this validation that comes from stuff is never God. I'm really rubbing the grain. Y'all with me? Are you still with me? You can't wear a watch until who made it. You step on the runway. What are you wearing? You got everybody's name on you but your own. So no one is better or less when it comes to time and change. You become what you are by how you use your 24. You have no idea how strong you are. You're not in this thing life by yourself. But one of the things that I know about this thing called life, recognize what had happened, the role that I played in it, I had to keep it moving. Got to keep it moving. Each of us must live off the fruit of his thoughts in the future, because what you think today and tomorrow, next month and next year, will mold your life and determine your future. You're guided by your mind. You have built-in greatness. You have built-in power to handle whatever life throws at you. And life is going to be throwing a lot of stuff. Nobody's going to be spared. That's why Victor Frankl called it unavoidable suffering. But suffering is a choice because you can suffer or you can choose to do whatever you need to do to overcome whatever you are stuck in right now. Never underestimate the power of influence and associations. And never underestimate the power of your own consistent self-discipline. Sleep late, show up late. Waiting is always easier than acting. Imagine what life would be like if we didn't have to make our bed in the morning. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we didn't have to do these things? What do you suppose would become of us? You're right, not much. One of the great distractions of chasing our dreams is this thing that goes off in our head as we're negotiating the price we're paying. Is it getting too high? Is it too much? And you'll have people in your ear, it's too big a sacrifice. You're going through too much. It distracts all your focus. You can't be executing and negotiating simultaneously. So negotiate it now. Negotiate it with me now. What are you willing to pay? For me, when I'm after something big, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral, I'll sacrifice everything else. Greatness is not income. On the other hand, poverty is equated in, to greatness in a lot of people that, that if they have nothing, they must be great. And neither one is true. You're not great because you're poor. You're not great because you're rich. Your greatness is not based upon your income. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. It's the realization that your limitations are self-imposed and that the opportunities for you today are enormous beyond belief. To use all your courage to force yourself to think positively on your own problem. To let your marvelous mind think about your goal from all possible angles. There's some stuff you need to clean out and clear out in your life. Some activities, some relationships, some things, some events, some wrong thoughts, some misconceptions, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual rubble in your life that you need to clear out. What's the rubble in your life? It's the stuff that keeps tripping you up. I want to begin the process of deserving. What would that be? What process should I begin engaging in to deserve good health, to deserve a good relationship? What must I do to begin the process of deserving? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We need to get our own self-affirmations. There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. If you don't know who you are, you'll discount yourself. Think, oh man, I'm ordinary. Nothing much to offer, nothing special about me. Now life will try to make you feel like you're anything but amazing. 
disappointments, betrayals, rejection will try to steal your sense of value. But all through the day, despite what thoughts are telling you, despite who left you out, you need to remind yourself, I am amazing. I have been wonderfully made. Don't go around feeling ordinary when in fact you're extraordinary. People may try to make you feel average. You don't have much to offer. Are you going to believe what people say about you or believe what God says about you? You're amazing. Have you ever said that to yourself? It has to start on the inside. If people can understand that as long as they don't forgive, they're poisoning themselves. It's like me being mad at somebody who hurt me that's out having a good time and don't even care that I'm mad. That doesn't hurt them. It's pointless. It's like, okay, you hurt me, but now if I'm gonna hate you, then I'm letting you continue to hurt me. And you're controlling my life, and I'm not gonna do that. It is your values, it is your ethics, it is how you make choices that gets you promoted. It is not your strength, it is not your talent, it is not how you fight, it is not how you draw, it is not your intellectualism, it is your values. So that when you're backed up against the water and you have to make a decision, true leadership is how you make decisions in the moment. What do you care the most about, being seen or being connected? Doors of opportunity are open to those who continually knock. So we don't find open doors of opportunity because we need them. We find them because we deserve them. Only those who knock deserve to find an open door. It's as if you search, you will find. Finding is reserved for the searchers because they deserve it. Now at first they may have needed it, but they now know that just needing it is not sufficient. The reason why you're going to be blessed with good ideas is because you've come searching. And for those who search, they will find answers. To find a good idea, you must go looking if you wish to find. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. So we get not what we need, but we get what we deserve. It's as if you ask, someone has an answer. If you keep asking, the answers belong to you. So we don't get what we need, we get what we deserve.